Hello everyone and welcome to Windows Forensics here at Pen Tester Academy. In this video we're going to start a new section and we're going to talk a little bit about file forensics. So what is file forensics? Anyway, it is looking at individual files. So far we've talked for quite a while about the FAT file system and how it's organized and now we're going to start looking into the individual files. Now this information, these techniques that we're going to discuss, can be used to find hidden information, including things that are hidden in mismatched file extensions. So in the Windows system, Windows is pretty dumb about handling files. You know, if you use something like Linux or OS X, it knows what a file is by looking at the file itself, whereas Windows is not so smart, so it relies completely on the file extension to determine what kind of a file something is. And I can just change the file extension and it will appear as though a file is corrupted. And this is a very common way of hiding information. We can also see things that are hidden in Slack space. We'll talk a little bit later about what that means. And unallocated space. There might be unallocated space on your partition. You can also have unallocated sectors on a drive. We have page or swap files. So you might find information that is stored inside of those. Primarily, we are going to rely on file signatures. Now, many files have standard headers. The exception to this rule would be standard text files. Now, if the entire world used nothing but text files, it would be super easy to be a forensics person because there are all kinds of tools for searching through text, etc. that you could use. Some of these files also have standard footers and that can be useful as well when you're trying to look at these files and figure out what they are. So what good are file signatures? Well, they help you do a few things. Identify mismatched extensions, they help you retrieve files from swap and memory, and it also can help you if you undelete a file, you can verify that your undeletion was correct if you know what the file should look like internally. Gary Kessler has a really nice list and it is at the URL given. We also have slack space, that leftover space in a cluster when the file size is not an exact multiple of a cluster size. Now we break this up into two different categories. One of them is called RAM Slack, and that is a partial sector of Slack. So there will be usually a sector that's only partly used, and what remains in that sector is called RAM Slack. Any full sectors of Slack are called File Slack. Now to calculate the total slack, we need to first calculate what percentage of the cluster, the last cluster is being used, and that is just this, the file size modulus the cluster size. That gives us the part of that cluster that's being used. We said that slack space was the unused portion so we just take our cluster size and we subtract the total space used in the last cluster. A little bit more about RAM Slack. RAM Slack gets its name because a long time ago, this is what followed your file. So if you have some data in memory and you needed 512 bytes to write to a sector, if there was any additional bytes that came right after your data, that just got written to disk. Now, pretty quickly they figured out that this was a really bad idea when it comes to security because you were randomly writing memory items to the disk. So you're permanently storing who knows what. You know, who knows what could be passwords, it could be confidential data, it could be virtually anything. So today it should all be zeroed out. And how long have we been smart enough to zero this out? I would say approximately 20 years. So if today you see anything in this RAM slack, you should be very suspicious. So if I want to look, 
at the last sector just as I calculated the used portion for my total slack. I just take my file size modulus 512 and that will give me my used portion. To get my slack space, I start with my sector size and I subtract the used space. File slack. File slack are those whole sectors and why do we care about file slack? Well file slack can contain fragments of old files. So we said that we zero out the RAM slack but we do not zero out the file slack. How do you calculate the file slack? Well it's the total slack integer division with 512 and that will give you the file slack in sectors. So if we substitute in our value for the total slack, cluster size, minus file size, modulus, the cluster size, we take that entire quantity and we do an integer division with 512, we should get the file slack. One last thing I wanted to mention. We have something called file carving. Now this is used to find files in swap space, unallocated clusters within a partition, or unallocated disk space, space that's not inside of any partition. There are a couple of general carving tools out there that are pretty popular. One of them is called Foremost and there's another tool called Scalpel and we'll show you how to use some of these tools in future videos. There are also some specialized tools. So if I have a particular file type, for example a video file, I might only have fragments of that video file. You know, if we look at Slack space, we said that file Slack can contain fragments of things. So it makes sense that we would want a tool that could take those fragments of video and put them back together into a reconstructed video file. So that's one example of many specialized carving tools that exist. Well that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you soon.